Hi everybody, it's Neil Weichel with Remax. Welcome to May, and uh, it's pretty easy to choose this month's topic because it's been in the news, both local and nationally. Uh, here in Santa Clarita, we don't have national stories a whole lot, and I'm referring, of course, to the Chiquita Canyon situation, our local landfill, which is off the 126 in Castaic. And we get asked as real estate people a lot hey, what's going on? How does this impact me? Uh, what started out as being kind of a castaic issue is now spread to other parts of town as things show up in your mailbox saying, hey, join this lawsuit. Uh, this is becoming a bigger issue. And of course, when things are on the front page of the LA Times, it gets a lot of attention. So I asked uh, Lauren and Alec on my team to join me this morning to talk about it. Lauren, because she was born and raised in castaic, uh, her parents still live in castaic, and there's this widespread in the community with people saying, gosh, I don't smell anything. I don't have any adverse effects. I don't have any headaches. I don't have any nausea. I don't have any issues from you know, these, these uh, emissions. And then there's other people that are saying, oh my goodness, this has been a real, real problem for me. And it's, it's, it's you know, on the same street, you get these kind of reports. So Lauren, your folks live there still in, in Castaic. Uh, what has been their experience since this started at the end of uh, 2023? So yeah, my parents live in the North Bluff track right off the Hasley Canyon exit, and they have not experienced any issues from this, luckily. Um, we also have a horse that we keep up in Hasley Canyon just past the Valverde exit. Uh, we're there several times a week, and we haven't had any bad experiences there. So again, I don't wanna discount the fact that some people are having negative health effects from this, but there are a lot of people that have not. And I think those people are fearful and in reading all these headlines that, gosh, do I need to sell because property values are going to be affected in Castaic? Yeah, I think that's a very real question that we're getting, right? Like, hey, what's happening and do I need to sell and get out? And in fact, we've had a few clients that have done exactly that. Um, I've also asked Alec to sit in because he was fortunate enough to sit down with representatives from Catherine Barger's office. One of the things that we've noticed, and it makes me feel good living here, is Mike Garcia, Catherine Barger, everybody, the city people, everybody involved in Santa Clarita has gotten involved in this right away when they realized it was a problem. They want to be responsive. They want to be accountable to you, uh, the people that elect them. And so Alex sat down with them and learned a few things that I think you'll find interesting because a lot of people are calling for the dump, just shut it down. Okay, shut it down, shut it down now, it's a problem. Shut it down and we'll fix it and, and, and then you can bring it back. Um, but that isn't really necessarily, maybe the best course of action, right Alec? Yeah, so I mean, obviously I'm not an expert in this, but um, Stephanie English came to, uh, to speak with us about it and there were really three key things that were shared uh, to be taken away. The first is people were saying uh, we need to declare a state of emergency. Um, typically, you declare a state of emergency to get state and federal agencies to come help you out with an issue. And state and federal agencies have already been helping us out with this issue. Um, California agencies as well as the EPA federally. Um, so, and then also the reason, uh, one of the things that's involved with calling a state of emergency is you use taxpayer funds for that state of emergency. Right. And uh, so far, Chiquita Canyon, the landfill, has been covering the cost of this, which we as taxpayers probably want to continue to be the case. So that's a big one. Um, second, closing the, the landfill down. Um, in order to close a landfill down anywhere in the country, uh, you need state and federal agencies to oversee that process and approve it. Um, and it can be a lengthy process. It can take over a year to, to fully execute that. Um, and we don't want to detract from the, the state and federal agencies that are helping us deal with the issue right now, right? We want to deal with the issue and then sure. go from there. Um, so again, we want the, these people helping us mitigate this and get this behind us before we talk about closing it. And then of course, if we did close the landfill down, we would have to take our trash elsewhere and that would incur pretty heavy costs on a, a, all the, the citizens. And you shared with me that they've identified an area in the landfill, I think it's almost 200 acres, but it's a 30 acre kind of an older section where they've identified these, uh, these fumes, these noxious fumes, these emissions as coming from. Tell us just quickly about that. Yeah, so that's the third thing. And uh, basically the active portion of the landfill is about 170 acres, give or take. And the area that's an issue with these noxious gases, volatile gases, whatever the correct terms are, um, 
that site is a decommissioned part of uh, the landfill that's about 30 acres in size, give or take. Um, so the environmental standards back when this uh, portion of the landfill was active were different. It hasn't been active for many years, um, but now because of the different standards at that point in time, we're seeing issues with you know volatile gases and stuff. So they're discussing perhaps putting a geothermal tent over the top of that portion of the landfill, um, but they're doing their best to, to, to mitigate the, the situation and figure out how to make sure that this portion of the landfill that's no longer active is no longer a problem for us in the future. Sure. And so let me bottom line this for everybody because we're not scientists and, and certainly this is a very, very contentious topic. Okay. We're tackling it to educate you and to tell you what we're hearing and seeing. We're real estate people. We're not scientists. And so from a real estate point of view, the thing that's kind of surprised, I think all three of us is it really hasn't impacted the market much at all. Um, we have 28 homes for sale currently in the, in the Castaic area. We have 40 under contract. That means that even though the inventory has gone up, it usually does at this time of year, those homes are being sold. And they're being sold to people that are required to sign on some pretty scary disclosures. I mean, the disclosures that we have to give buyers and sellers right now are, you know, they're really, really, really detailed and scary. And it's not deterring people. Will it in the future? Perhaps, but for right now, Chiquita Canyon is something that hopefully a lot of good people are trying to get a, a handle on and it really won't impact the market because so far it hasn't. Thank you.